watercolour materials. They can be really expensive, can't they? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you 17 items that you probably already own or have in your household, and they're going to help you with your watercolour painting and drawing. So let's get started. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find art tips and techniques, particularly watercolour trainings and business and social media training for artists. So please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So when you first start painting in watercolours, you're going to find that you're spending a lot of money on paper and brushes and paint. But did you know that there's lots of stuff that you already own in your house or that you can pick up from the local cheap store for a pound or a dollar that you're going to find really, really useful for watercolour painting. So that's what we're going to go through in this video. And at the end of the video, hopefully you found lots of stuff that you can put in your brand new art box and it won't have cost you a penny. So the first household items that I have in my box are some um, candles. Candle wax was keep one of these in my art box. So they're really great for reserving white paper. Um, they're not particularly precise, but if you rub the candle across the paper in horizontal lines, then what will happen is uh, you'll get this kind of sparkle effect. So I've done a video exactly on this technique. If you want to watch that one after this one, you can click up there. It is, um, I think I used mostly oil pastel for that video, but it works just as well with candle. And because candle wax is transparent, unlike oil pastels, you can also reserve dried watercolour paint too. So you can reserve an underneath colour and paint over the top. Like I said, it's not a particularly precise technique. There are ways of using it more precisely. I'll do a video about that uh, in the future. But meantime, just have an experiment. It's a, it's a great technique. Number two on my list of free or cheap art materials is this stuff, plastic cling film wrap, um, called cling film in the UK. It's used for wrapping um, sandwiches and things. And this stuff as well, which is bubble wrap. So what can you do with these? You can tear off little pieces and you can press them into your watercolour paint while it's wet and let it dry and it produces the most, uh, most interesting shapes and patterns. So if you've got somewhere that you need some texture, that's something you can do. Now, it's not very uh, environmentally friendly, is it, plastic wrap? So what I would say to you is that you don't have to, um, I mean, I've stopped using it in my kitchen, to be honest, I've started using Tupperware containers and things like that. But you don't have to use it once only and I don't know about you but I'm always finding that bubble wrap even though I don't buy it it just finds its way into my household when somebody buys something on eBay something like that but because you're using it for art you don't have to throw it in the bin you're not wrapping food in it so once you've used it once give it a rinse hang it up on a peg to dry and you can use it again some fantastic techniques to be had with plastic wrap Number three on my list is cotton wool. These are cotton wool pads, but you can use the cotton wool balls as well. I find the pads, um, I have them in my house anyway for taking off makeup, and I just find that they work, uh, work really well. So what do you use them for? You can use them for erasing watercolour mistakes. You may have seen uh, very expensive items advertised called magic sponges. They work perfectly well, but let me tell you, these are just as well. I've tried both and um, because a company sent me some samples and cotton wool works just as well. So what you do is you dip it in clean water, you've got to squeeze it really, really hard, as hard as you can, to remove just about every bit of excess water from it, so it's just a tiny bit damp. And then once your watercolour mistake has dried, don't do it while it's wet because you'll, um, you'll rough up the surface of the paper and push the mistake in further. Once your watercolour paper has, um, has dried, then you just do tiny, tiny circles and you should be able to gently erase your mistake. At number four, we have kitchen paper or paper towel like this. So it's useful for lots of things. You can, um, you can scrunch it up and you can press it on your paper if you want texture effects. There's also a great technique you can use it for to make a sun or a moon. I'm going to uh, link to that video up here. If you click on those links that, um, that appear above me, you won't go off of this video. It'll just line it up so you can watch it after this one. The, uh, the main thing I use paper towel for really actually is just drying my brush. And I am trying, because paper towel is not that environmentally friendly, I am trying to move over to using rags. So if you've got an old t-shirt, you can cut that up and um, you can dry your brush on that as well. So whilst you're watercolour painting, if there are puddles on your paper, dry your brush off on the uh, on the paper towel or the rags and then you can just use your brush to lift it'll just sort of suck up like a like a vacuum cleaner it'll lift the excess water off of your paper only actually press the paper towel onto the watercolor paper 
if you want to leave specific texture marks. At number five, we have plastic pots like this. Do you eat a lot of hummus? I eat tons of hummus because I'm vegan. We practically live on the stuff. Also, um, people in my household get takeaways. You sometimes get Chinese takeaways. You might have a little bit of uh, mango chutney or something in these. They're absolutely fantastic. I always keep them in my box um, and I give them to my students as well. If you need to mix up a, uh, a large puddle of paint for a flat wash, there's no point trying to do it in one of those tiny little palettes. You just won't be able to mix up enough paint and I'm sure that you've had the situation where you've run out of paint halfway across the paper. So what you want to do is get your little plastic pot. I mean I sometimes even I sometimes even start by tipping water in the pot first and then adding the paint if I want to make a really big puddle of paint. So those are really useful. So you want to find a couple of those, rinse them out and pop them in your art box. At number six and of a similar category we have ceramic dishes. So these can be picked up really cheaply and used as palettes. Um, this one here, I think I bought it years ago uh, with the idea that I would have dinner parties and um, put dips in it. Of course, I don't have dinner parties. I've got no time for cooking at the moment. But these are really, really great for using um, as uh, as palettes. Now the advantage to ceramic, and I don't suggest that you take it to art classes because it's too heavy, it'll probably break, but the advantage to uh, to ceramic is that you can use them for mixed media as well. So things like inks and things like acrylic paints that would otherwise stain your, uh, your plastic palettes or perhaps not come off at all. You don't have to worry if you use ceramic dishes. They can also be used just like the plastic pots if you've got a larger well of paint that you need to mix up. So next time you're sort of out in the cheap household uh, section, the kitchenware section of your household shop, and you see those little pots with individual areas for dips or for, for deviled eggs or something like that, you know, have a look at it, think, would it be useful in my art studio? And number seven, we have masking tape. So this is just comes from the, uh, from the DIY store, from the household store, and um, it's great for all sorts of things. You can stick the corners of your sketch pad down with it. Um, you can mask things out with it. Now, if you are going to put it directly on watercolour paper, you want to tear a piece off and stick it to your clothing, you know, on off, on off quite a few times and pick up some lint and reduce the sticky by about half. That way it won't tear your paper when you remove it. I've got a fantastic technique you can use this for, for backgrounds as well. So um, I'll link to that video up here. You can really do a lot of things with masking tape. I don't myself tend to buy this uh, very expensive, brightly coloured, you know, pink flamingo washi tape that all the crafters use. I guess it's because I come from more of a fine art background. Nothing wrong with washi tape. If you love using it, then you love using it. It's, you know, it's great, it's fun. But um, for me, a bit of old masking tape will do fine and it's much cheaper too. At number eight, we've got toothbrushes and old brushes and these, uh, these cheap, stiff acrylic brushes generally. These are great. So of course you need some decent brushes for watercolour painting, but these old brushes are fantastic too. So if you've got tube paints, then you've put them out into wells and they've dried, or if you use pan paints, don't be using your best brushes to try and pick up paint, to sort of scrub and scrub and you swirl and swirl and swirl, trying to pick up enough pigment. Just use an old brush like this to mix from. These are so cheap, you know, they, they come in kids' paint sets and they, uh, they come into, the, uh, you know, into cheap shops. Um, so they're great for that. Also, old toothbrushes, you can use them to clean your paints up with. You can use them to, uh, to splatter paint and masking fluid. You can even press them and use them for texture effects. At number nine, we've got household bleach, the type they use for cleaning toilets. Yes, really. Um, I try to be a bit more environmentally friendly these days and I mostly do my cleaning with things like uh, vinegar and bicarbonate of soda. But household bleach, actually what you can do with it is you can put it in a little spray bottle like this and mix it with 50% water. So you want half water and half bleach and you can spray it and get some really interesting effects on your watercolour backgrounds. So you obviously this is um, a little bit of a, shall we say, a dangerous technique. You don't know what's going to happen and it can affect the surface of your paper. So this is a good one for experimenting, but you really can get some great results with it. It's particularly good with uh, with brusho, which is how I learned about the technique. So if you don't know what brusho is, literally the word brush with an O on the end and it's a watercolour pigment powder. And if you spray bleach on this or any other type of watercolour, then it's going to affect the way the, uh, the paint looks. So uh, sometimes it bleaches out the colour to white and sometimes it just changes it to another colour altogether. Of course, by spraying, you get a speckled effect. So you can get some really interesting effects with household bleach and water. 
of course take care to use it in a ventilated area keep it away from children and don't breathe in the spray but it's a really fun thing to have an experiment with at number 10 we have a good old-fashioned ballpoint pen like this one so in the uk we tend to call these biros that's a brand name um, you might call them ballpoint pens so the ones that don't have the fiber tip they have the little ball in and the ink you can actually get some really good drawing techniques with these. Now, when I was at school and I should have been doing maths, I was usually drawing pop stars on the back of my notepad with a biro or a ballpoint pen. And the ink is actually waterproof. So if you're on holiday or something like that and you fancy doing a, a bit of pen and wash and you don't have any dip pens or you didn't want to take them away because of the mess, you will find that you can use a ballpoint pen. At number 11, we have cotton buds like this. Now, these can be used for various things, including um, you can use them for cleaning out your paint palette after you've washed it and you can't get the paint out the corners of those tiny little wells. You can also use it if you haven't got one of those expensive sort of rolled paper torsions that you use for blending pencil and, uh, and pastel and things like that. You can use a cotton bud for that as well. The other thing that you can do with them is you can actually press them onto your watercolors and get tiny little round marks. So uh, if you're painting something like seashells or animal fur with little uh, little light dots in, something where you don't need anything as harsh as, uh, as masking fluid, you can use one of these and you can press. Um, these are quite old, I've had them in the studio for a while. I no longer buy the, uh, the plastic center ones, I always buy the paper ones now so that they nicely biodegrade after I've finished using them. At number 13, we have sandpaper like this. So um, it comes in all different sort of, uh, sort of gradients and you've probably got some in your, in your shed or your garage. So the rough stuff like this, I keep little squares of it like this. And what you can do is you can actually, uh, you can actually rub your, uh, your watercolor paper and um, have a little experiment, rub a little square of it and, um, and put some paint over the top. And what you'll find is that the, uh, the paint sinks more into the area that's been rubbed. So you get much more of a sort of a texture effect. So great for texture effects on watercolor paper. And with the finer sandpaper, you can also use it to, um, to rub your pencil on and to sharpen your pencil into a really fine point. It's what professional pencil artists do if they want a point that's um, you know, constantly kept sharp and they don't want to keep losing the pencil by sharpening with a pencil sharpener. You can use sandpaper for that too. At number 12, we have sea salt, the kind that you put in your kitchen grinder and it's kind of, kind of chunky, looks like this. So um, I keep some of this in my studio and I even keep a little bit of it in a tiny pot in my art box. And all you do with it is you sprinkle it into wet watercolour paint, let it dry, brush it off and you have some beautiful, beautiful crystallisation techniques. There's a few tricks to using it, so I've got a video on that. I'll link to it up here. At 14, we've got paper offcuts. So these are the bits of paper that are left over after I have finished stretching my watercolour paper. And um, I tend to buy full size sheets of watercolour papers. That's the cheapest way of buying it. And then I cut them down and stretch them onto boards. And I've always got those strips down the side left that aren't big enough for any kind of painting. So chop those up. You always want to try your colours out and your techniques out before going ahead and putting them on the paper. I'm amazed at how many times I see my students just, you know, chucking a colour on the paper and then, oh dear, that's a bit dark. Watercolour paint uh, dries 50% lighter. So you always want to try it out. If you're, if you're at all uncertain of what a technique's gonna look like, of how dark a color's going to dry, or even just if that color looks right in your painting, then always try out on a scrap of paper first. So if you've got leftover scraps of watercolor paper, or perhaps you may, you know, maybe you buy watercolor paper in pads, and sometimes you, uh, you do a little drawing, a little painting, it didn't work so well, don't lose that white paper around the edge. Chop it up into squares and keep it in your painting box so that you can try out your techniques and your colours before you put them on your painting. At number 15, we have old credit cards. So this is, uh, this is a plastic bus pass that I bought when I went to Malta a couple of years ago so my daughter and I could, uh, could hop around the island and see all the sights. Of course, I came home, I still got it. Now, what you can do with these is um, you can cut them up into smaller pieces if you want to. You can use them as they are. They're great for making rocks. So if you're painting and you've got um, your watercolour is wet, you can sort of scrape and get these sort of square edge shapes for rocks and things like that. They're also very good if you ever need to mix something like two-part adhesive. You can cut a strip, you know, cut a strip down 
and then you can use that to mix up your two part adhesive and not mess up any uh, any glue spreaders that you've got and it's a little bit stronger than cardboard so these are great for various watercolour techniques I've even seen people use the edge of them to make straight lines by dipping in paint so uh, an old credit card can be used for your watercolour painting at number 16 I have these tiny little glass pots now this one had some uh, some pigment eyeshadow in um, I've got others I think these had tea lights in and um, oh here we go lip gloss so what do I keep these for these are really good for pen and wash so if you have got uh, ink like this and um, you want to decant it into something put it into the smallest pot possible because it's uh, it's really easy to spill one of these so what I like to do is just put the tiniest amount in the bottom of one of these little jars and then uh, with my dip pen I can just hold it right close to where I'm working and dip in you know a really tiny amount of ink on the bottom that way there's less chance of it dripping if you dip one of these straight into a big pot of ink like that one there where you can't see through you're just going to get ink all over the dip pen and um, you're going to make a big old mess so these tiny little uh, little jars and I like this um, I like this De La Roni um, FW ink simply because um, not sponsored but simply because it's got this this pipette so if you buy ink I think the Winsor & Newton ones don't have this it's perfectly good ink but if you buy something like a Winsor & Newton uh, ink that doesn't have the uh, the pipette built into it I'll show you what it looks like like this but you can buy those little pipettes separately so what you want to do is get yourself a little pipette and then you take the ink and put a tiny bit into your glass jar and use it from there you'll make a lot less mess last of all on my list is hand soap like this liquid hand soap so uh, you don't put this in your box obviously wouldn't fit but um, by the sink it's really good for cleaning your watercolor brushes so when you finish a painting it's often a good idea to give your brushes a proper clean rather than just rinsing in water for that very final clean before you put them away and I have had these little pots of proper brush cleaning soap before now and there's nothing wrong with that stuff but uh, I do find that liquid hand soap works just as well for getting your watercolour brushes clean if you've got something like um, dried acrylic paint you're going to need a specialist product to get that out but just to clean brushes with wet acrylic paint on or with a bit of dried watercolour in then uh, liquid hand soap, soap works perfectly well just put a bit in the palm of your hand squidge your brush around and uh, rinse it in clean water afterwards I wouldn't advise using household bar soap you can get some solid soaps that are sold as brush cleaners and those are fine but I wouldn't use the household bar soap because um, bar soap tends to leave residue but the liquid hand soap works really well and it's a great addition to your studio so I hope this video has helped you to see some of your household items in a completely different light and see how you could add them to your art box or your art studio or your working area to, uh, to add a little bit of variety to your watercolour painting. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be producing lots more videos like this to save you money, reviews of art materials and um, also some more in-depth techniques using some of the things that I've spoken about today. If you click the subscribe button and hit the bell notification, you'll get notified next time I have a video for you.